So today we will discuss about the solidification defects. So here two types of defects are occurred during the solidification. One is the shrinkage problem and second one is the gas porosity. So in a shrinkage, the most materials contracts are shrink during the solidification and cooling. So this is the first uh, type of defect. And second, the shrinkage can sometimes cause the cracking to occur in component as it is solidifies. So these are the two types of the defects occurs due to the solidification. Second one is the gas porosity. So the many metals dissolve in a large quantity of gas when they are liquid. However, when metals solidify, they retain only a small part of the gas, but these forms bubbles trapped in the solid metal producing the gas porosity. So the mode of solidification affects the properties of casting and acquires uh, metallurgic structure which is determined during the solidification. So the metallic structures uh, include the grain size, shape and orientation of the grains, then the distribution of the alloying elements, then underlying crystal structure and its imperfection. Then the steps in the solidifications are liquid state, nucleation, crystallization and grain growth. So these are the four important steps of the solidification process. Then cooling curve for the solidification process. So the plotting of the temperature during the cooling as a function of the time as a graph. So cooling curve is the curve which is drawn time with respect to the temperature. So region A to B, there will be the sudden cooling then b dash critical temperature or critical cooling where solidification starts then b to c constant temperature the first solid will form at point b that is solidification start point is point b and solidification end point is point c so the solidification completed at point c after that uh, c to d region uh, again cooling rate or cooling curve so the further grain growth and refinement of the grain occurs between region C to D. So this is the cooling curve which shows the plotting of the temperature during cooling as a function of the time as a graph. Next is the interpretation. So TF is the straight or plative portion of the curve. DC is the freezing point or solidification temperature of the pure metal and pressure temperature. Then latent heat of solidification, it is defined as the number of calories of the heat liberated from one gram of the substance when it transforms the liquid state to the solid state. Next is the supercooling, that is nothing but the initial cooling of the liquid metal from Tf, that is temperature to the point B dash. So if it, it is important to emphasize that supercooling of the pure metal only occurs in clean and inert containers. Next is a nucleation. The formation of a center around which further crystallization takes place is called as a nuclei and process of its formation is called as a nucleation. So it largely depends on the critical radius of nucleation. The nuclei with smaller than RC are less likely to form a crystal and are called as emeroids. They may be get dissolved in a liquid again. Then generally nucleation is the combination of both types or two types. First, so these are the types of the nucleation. So first is a homogeneous nucleation. So the nucleation takes place throughout the material simultaneously. That is called as a homogeneous nucleation. The nucleation sites are uniform throughout the material. So it takes place due to the undercooling and slow cooling. 
so most of the solidification takes place through it so in diagram also you can see the oh uh, the one container is there so this is the wall of the container which contains the homogeneous mixture of the molten liquid so here melt is there so this is the liquid metal then there will be the formation of the nuclei in inside the liquid itself during the under cooling or slow cooling and after that further and more nuclei will get formed for the cluster of the nuclei will happen and entire liquid will gets converted into the solid and finally we will get the solid structure means this entire melt it gets converted into the liquid so this is called as a homogeneous nucleation uniformly in this melt the nuclei will gets formed and further growth of the nuclei an atomic structure that is a crystalline structure will get produced next is a heterogeneous nucleation so the nucleation takes place randomly due to the supercooling so it takes place at mold melt interface surface of the melt and impurities so here it is the again a, a molten liquid that is a melt then here you can see it is a place in to the container so this is the wall of the container and here in the liquid or melt there is somewhat uh, impurities are there in this region or there will be the defect or impurity at the wall of the uh, container so at that point the nucleation will go starts during the supercooling so this is a further formation of the nuclei takes place at the wall of the container and wherever the impurity present in the melt so further there will be the growth of the nuclei and entire melt will get converted into the solid so such type of nucleation is called as a heterogeneous nucleation so in this way imperfection in the mold walls particles of the dust and other impurities in the molten metal can produce the heterogeneous nucleation so the, these are the three reasons for the heterogeneous nucleation that is a imperfection in the mold walls particles of dust and other impurities in the molten metal can produce the heterogeneous nucleation next is a free energy formation so here the diagram shows the free energy formation so the free energy formation of the nucleus as a function of its radius f e is the volume of free energy so this is the volume of the free energy of the embryos then fs is the free energy or free surface energy so this is the fs the free surface energy and r is the resultant free energy so this is the r is the resultant free energy so this is the free energy formation during the nucleation so the overall free energy of the embryos overall free energy of the embryos that is the resultant r is the summation of the surface free energy and volume free energy that is the fs and fp where surface free energy fs is the positive increases as the square of the embryos radius increases then volume free energy change that is fp negative varies as the third power of the spherical embryos radius so at a small value of the embryos radius free energy or free surface energy is a dominant and the overall free energy for the formation of the embryos is positive energetically unfavorable at large volume or the at large value of the embryos radius f e becomes dominant and the overall free energy of the embryo is negative so energetically favorable next is the critical nucleus size designated as a ro corresponds to the maximum point in the total free energy of the embryos as a function of the radius for the embryo of radius ro the overall free energy r decreases with the addition of another atom and continues to decrease as the embryo embryo grows
So the embryos with the radial smaller than RO are unstable and spontaneously form and disappear in the liquid metal. On the other hand, embryos with the radii larger than RO are stable nuclei and continue to grow during the solidification process. It follows that the greater the amount of supercooling or equivalently, the greater the rate of the temperature reduction below Tf, the smaller is the critical radius RO because of the value of Fv for a given embryo size becomes increasingly negative. Therefore, the value of Fs per unit area is not greatly affected by the amount of supercooling. So in this way, we can study the concept of free energy formation. So thank you for watching the video.